Seal Rocks to Mile Lake and now Tea Gardens, I'm exploring a short but very beautiful stretch of Australia's magnificent coastline just three hours north of Sydney. What I haven't done yet is journey into the very environment that shapes this region, the cobalt blue waters of the Tasman Sea, our vast corner of the mighty Pacific Ocean. And about 50 minutes by boat is one of Port Stephen's most pristine escapes, Broughton Island. Home to a clutch of fishermen's cabins and my camp for the night. Camping's permitted at Little Poverty Beach, but limited to just 30 people in total on three raised camping decks that need to be booked and prepaid before leaving the mainland. Broughton is within the Mile Lakes National Park and at 114 hectares it feels like a very large and truly untouched slice of coastal paradise, especially if you are into water sports and wildlife or a combination of the two. Back when I was of a more impressionable age, there was a movie released which changed the way we all thought about swimming in the ocean. The movie was Jaws. And ever since then, the notion of taking a dip has had a somewhat more thrilling edge added to it. So today, as we head out to sea for a dive, I'm particularly mindful of the fact that uh, out there, I'm no longer head of the food chain. About a 15 minute cruise north of Broughton Island is North Rock, home to a colony of endangered grey nurse sharks. Diving with me today is dive master, marine conservationist and citizen scientist Jimmy Dodd, who takes it upon himself to record every dive on his stills camera and submit his photos to a national database called Grey Nurse Watch for help with shark identification and conservation work. I took a photo of one in the survey here in August last year and sent them off to a mob called Grey Nurse Shark Watch and they had actually identified that shark from 2008 at Seal Rocks. They do migrate, so they'll go, you know, maybe from here down to Batemans Bay, down to Tolgate Islands, and they have been found up past Fraser Island. I have dived with sharks before, but I'm not entirely relaxed about this dive. I'm not really sure what to expect. Beneath the surface, huge curtains of shimmering baitfish move in a slow motion ebb and flow. At depths of only five to 10 meters, this is an easy dive. And then, out of the cloud, we see our first gray nurse. There are estimated to be only 1,500 of these graceful creatures left in the wild, thanks to decades of illegal fishing. And while they may all look the same to the untrained eye, to Jim and his camera, they're all individuals, identified by the pattern of spots on their flanks in the same way that fingerprints are with humans. So, if Jim and his fellow citizen scientists diving up and down the east coast take sufficient images, then migration patterns can be identified by the Grey Nurse Watch charity. That was absolutely unbelievable. Just sitting down there, there must be, I don't know, 15 Grey Nurses just cruising around. It was incredible. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And while my trepidation is in the past, the future and survival of sharks and other endangered species is passing into the hands of a new generation. Like my fellow shark diver, Courtney Rays, finishing her masters in biological science with a passion for the sea. Have you experienced anything quite like that before? No, that was very exciting. I loved it, yeah. Really nice sharks. Nice very, sharks. <laughs> they're very calm and yeah, reserved compared to other sharks. Coming up, Port Stephen's irresistible dolphins come out to play by the hundreds. Mm -hmm. 